Counting your calories, tracking your macros is a terrible long-term weight loss and fat loss approach. Whoa. Right. I know. Hey People get really upset hey with that I one. feel like you're personally attacking me. No. Okay, so... so <laughs> I have my six-pack bags today. No, <laughs> here's yeah. the deal. You throw that away. No, here's the deal. Look, uh, understanding calories and food and proteins, fats, and carbohydrates is an important piece of the learning process, but a, as a long-term approach, it's terrible because what you don't want to do, and this I've seen this countless times is nobody wants to live, unless you're a fanatic, right? Nobody wants to live a life where they're constantly counting calories, constantly tracking macros. Wayne measuring food. It's, it's, it's neurotic, and yeah. it, it's actually a pretty uh, short, good shortcut towards dysfunctional eating habits. The long-term approach always, it's always good to, you want to know stuff, you want to be educated on, on food, but you have to work on your behaviors because you want your eating habits to feel natural and comfortable, not stressful and tracking and counting because stressful eating leads to dysfunction. So now that being said, um, there's a there's a huge importance around the education piece of learning. Like, so, I mean, how many times have you guys got a client who doesn't even know what a carb or a protein or a mm -hmm. fat really is? Totally. Uh, and then is completely off when you ask them how many calories uh, they're eating and then they actually do track it and you realize it was uh, they were totally underestimating what they were eating. Mm -hmm. So since we know that, right, and we've experienced that and the only way for them to figure that out is to track. So what does that process look like? So is it, okay, we're going to track, even though I believe this is a bad idea long term for your weight loss, but I also recognize that we've got to have an idea of what you're consuming on a regular basis. It, it's a foundational piece to uh, build off of that, right? Like you need the education and the know-how of what you're putting in your body is going to affect you. And so to be able to track is, is crucial in the beginning in terms of just having the awareness of uh, like for some of my clients, just having snacks and, and nuts, for example, like it, that being more calories than they even anticipated, mm -hmm. you know, really played a major factor in them trying to lose weight. So, you know, it just it's just more eye opening to go through the process, and then uh, eventually you understand yourself and your patterns more effectively. Because I feel like common practice in our space is when you're on and you're training. You're in, in dieting, you're tracking. When you're off, you're off. Right. And that and it's just this And the off is cyclical. Way off. Yeah. Right. Off is yes. no tracking, eating eating like an asshole, uh, right. you know, putting on the weight, not exercising, all the stuff, right? And then, okay, I'm getting started again. Call up my trainer Adam. Hey, mm -hmm. what's up, dude? I want to get back in it. I fell, you know, I fell off over the holidays. Mm -hmm. Let's get going again. And then okay, we're back to tracking. And then we do that for six months, get in some good shape, yeah. and then the cycle starts over again. So when you guys are starting with a client and you understand the value of tracking for educational purposes, but you know the long-term goal is to get them to not track again. What does that conversation look like when you when you when you first start with them? Well, it starts in the beginning. Um, so f first off, let's back up for a second. Is the obesity ob epidemic? So, so and we have to separate getting shredded um, and just general health, right? Because if you want to get shredded. You're probably going to have to track. Things need to be much more specific. I'm glad you said that. We're yeah, taking. We're not talking to competitive no people. Right? No. So if if you're a if you're a man yeah. and you have good eating behaviors, good relationship to food and exercise, you're going to sit around 12 to 16 percent body fat. Right. This is kind of a healthy body fat range. You're relatively lean. You're not going to be unless you're genetically gifted uh, or you exercise that crazy. You're not going to be seven percent, six percent body fat, just from kind of you know, living your life and eating, you know, relatively healthy. That comes from really being specific, really tracking. So those are two separate things. But the obesity epidemic is not the result of lack of information and lack of understanding of calories and, you know, what makes us overweight or overeating. I think it, it, it's pretty well established we know, you know, what causes that. Overweight people tend to know what causes that. And yet they're still 70, 80, 100 pounds overweight uh, at times. So, the real issue is are the behaviors, is, is mm -hmm. the dysfunctional relationship that we have with food where it becomes um, a drug. We self-medicate with it. We have a bad relationship with it. We eat past the point of satiety. We don't identify bad behaviors uh, that we have with nutrition. We hate our bodies, like all these different things. So I think it has to start in the beginning along with tracking because the tracking gives you the information. Like you need to know what a serving of chicken 
and rice or whatever looks like for your body type. But beyond that, if you mm -hmm. don't identify the real behaviors, here's what'll happen. You'll have these, you'll still have these dysfunctions, but now you're fit, you fit the dysfunctions when the, within this, you know, rigid box of tracking. And then eventually that bot, you break out of that box and that's where you get the binge and you get the off the wagon and you get the weight loss and the weight gain type of deal that we see in everybody. Right. So that's 80, this is why, you know, the vast majority of diets fail. It's not the lack of information. It's the lack of focusing on the root cause uh, of the problem. And so that's why we need to we need to talk about this because mm -hmm. I've seen, look, I'll tell you what, I've seen more than my share of people in our space, the fitness fanatics, who have such a dysfunctional relationship to eating through tracking. No, it's got to fit in my macros. it's so and neurotic. I it's very neurotic. And, that's, and I think that as coaches, we've learned too that if we simplify the process and, and really just present a more... Uh, effective strategy. So these, there's strategies that will move the needle, but won't be quite as invasive in terms of them having to have this extensive education of, um, you know, how how many uh, pounds or you know ounces or whatever are in in their meat, and you know, like like calculating out all their grams and and uh, macronutrients and calories. Like if we can kind of you know establish some understanding there, but really it's like what. Are, what are a better strategy? It's, it's, you know, moving more towards whole foods and eliminating, uh, you know, some of these, um, uh, behaviors. Forget, yeah. Behaviors. Yeah. No, you know, when they do, when they show studies will show that a therapist will get somebody long-term success, uh, more often and better than somebody that follows a tracking type diet. Now in the short term, a tracking diet is very effective because you just follow the rules and you, you know, calories in versus calories out and you lose weight. Long term, it's it obviously fails. Why does a therapist work so well? Because in therapy, they kind of focus on the root, and then the side effect of which is you treat yourself a little bit better, right? Because what you don't here's a good example. Okay, a terrible approach to getting better posture is to constantly have to think about your posture. Like, oh, just think about your posture all day long. Think about how good it needs to be. Like, what a uh, stressful kind of way to live, right? You you want good posture naturally so you can live your life. Having a long-term healthy approach with nutrition is the same. It needs to feel more relaxed, needs to feel less stress. Stress is a strong trigger towards bad relationships with food, overeating, undereating, you know, restriction and binge, that kind of stuff. And tracking all the time, forever, for most people, is a stressful endeavor. It just so is. How, how would you handle a, a client like this? Um, I get married in August. And I want to get it in the best shape of my life <laughs> yeah. between now and then. So, yeah. like that—that's my specific goal that I'm asking you. And you got me now today. Yeah. You're on a timeline. Yes. So, what? What does the conversation change? Are you still communicating the same thing, but then maybe your approach is different? Like, what are you saying to that person? Because there are a lot of people. Because I think what you're saying makes total sense for you know, the person who decides I'm going to make a, a change in my life. I've been overweight for a really long time. I've got all these health markers yeah. that are going off my doctors and I, I want to be around for my kids, whatever the reason is, right? right. They're, they're motivated to make a change in their life and they want to get professional help from someone like one of you and they, and they, and they sit at you. And so that, that yeah. makes all sense to me, this community, th this conversation, the way you're presenting it. But then you have the other, the other part is, or people that come in and say, hey, I've got this specific goal. Um, I've got a wedding in X amount of months. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the best shape I can get in at that time. What do you say to that person? Yeah, well, if it's possible, um, then uh, to maintain integrity, I'll, I'm always very honest. Like, okay, well, you want to lose 15 pounds in two and a half months. We can definitely do that. You're not working out now. Your nutrition, you don't really know, you know how to eat in order to get to your particular goals. So here's a deal. We can do it, but it's not a long-term approach. It's not the healthiest approach. So throughout the process, that's how I'm going to educate the person. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to track you. We're going to follow those things. But here's why it's going to fail if we don't work on these behaviors, if we don't look at the root cause. And I'll let them know the entire time that this is going to be a failing long-term strategy. Because look, let me ask you guys, yeah. how often... Out of a, out of a hundred people, how many people would succeed long term with that kind of a goal? Oh, they all fail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's why. So you're. Actually. So I, that's what I was looking for from you was something like along those lines because I was hoping you weren't going to say, "Oh, you would not allow them to track." Because if you if you want uh, if you have a time frame right a specific that you have to try and, and and get them 
tracking is going to get there, right? Yeah. I mean, tracking is sure. going to... You have to be more specific. Right. Like, if there, if there is a time frame that I have to be in this shape, or the, whether it be the best shape of my life or a certain amount of weight by a certain amount of time... Right. That then for sure I'm gonna have you track. But what what how I would communicate it is that okay, that's fine. That's a goal. Great. We're gonna do this. Can I add to that goal? Mm -hmm. What I want to add to that goal is okay. After I get you in the best shape of your life for the wedding, I, I assume that you want to be able to maintain that for the rest of your life. Then allow me to make another goal on top of that. Is our goal then is to get you away from having to track food and still be able to maintain your weight or your physique the way you, that you would like or your health, whatever, however you want to present it. But uh, I want to add to that goal. So, okay, we're going to be mm -hmm. super rigid. We're going to track. We're going to get as, the most results we can this time. But that's not the end of this process. I'd like to get to a place where we cannot track for a while. I'll monitor you. I'll see what's going on and stuff like that and be checking in with you every week mm -hmm. or two weeks. But the, the ultimate goal is, can I get you in the best shape of your life and then also give you practices that will allow you to maintain and that? And coach you through that process because yeah. that's, yeah. a, that's a coaching process, right? I think the, the ideal situation is to live a life – and again, I'm not talking to fitness maniacs and fanatics. That's, a, that's 1% of everybody I'm talking to. So for most people, I think ideally what you want is you want to kind of live for most of your life in this general range of – health, right? So gen relatively lean, um, d decent mobility, you know, decent strength and stamina, and you feel good for the most part. And that's how you live most of your life. And then from there, that's your base, right? From there, then you, oh, I want to get shredded. Okay. Now I'll track and turn up the intensity and the volume or, oh, I'm going to compete in a powerlifting competition. Now we, tr we do all the stuff to take us to the extreme level. But it's nice when the base is general health and relative leanness. Leanness. What you don't yeah. want is what happens to a lot of people where, oh, I want to get shredded, and then there's no base. You know, It goes yeah. way the hell. Like you see people post- One extreme to the other. Yeah, post bikini show. You know, these are, We're talking about tiny girls, 110-pound girls, getting 30 pounds in 30 days yeah. after the competition. That's what you don't want to do those those crazy swings and we can get into all kinds of conversations to why that's terrible yeah. for your body, but what what we're looking at is always have that long term. How is this going to work for me long term? Because statistically speaking, you know, I don't know how many times I've said this, we don't have a weight loss problem. We have a keep weight off problem, mm -hmm. and the weight loss issue is easily solved. Okay, you losing weight, piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Keeping it off, that's the thing we got to talk right. about. That's we need where flexibility. Uh, life just presents you with so many different um, challenges and and. You know, you need to be able to not uh, have a decision one day that's really going to affect you, you know, substantially. So to be able to pull yourself into that sort of home base where um, re you're relatively healthy, relatively strong, relatively lean, you just have a lot more options in terms of which way you can go and navigate through. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.